forward slash business. But we're going to turn our attention elsewhere now because computer games, they are on our phones, they're on our laptops, and they're even finding their way into the movies. Uh, but they seem to be almost everywhere. Well, one company is taking things even further. It's trying to tempt customers to buy stuff by playing games right there in the shop or the supermarket. Uh, it's called Tsubuka. It's a Singapore-based tech startup which has established a network of gaming kiosks in supermarket aisles right across China, Singapore and Australia. Well, the aim is to tempt shoppers with games that feature global brands including Coca-Cola, Colgate and Heineken. They've already signed up to the service. The company says it now reaches more than 15 million people every month. Well, with us is Giles Corbett. He's the co-founder of the company. Giles, really good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure to be here. Um, I'll I, I tell you one thing I want to work out. You're based in Singapore, but you're not from Singapore. No, 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 we're, how, we're, how we're, work no out? we're based in London and Singapore. All of our engineering teams, all of the, 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 the guys who go and build all the software to enable this are in London. Um, and our business development today is predominantly out of Asia and in Singapore. OK, so we briefly ran through what it is. Uh, in, in your words, tell us how it works. This is a, a kiosk that goes in stores, mm -hmm. uh, and it's to try and tempt me to maybe buy another can of Coca-Cola, another tube of toothpaste, uh, by playing a game. So what we're doing is we're helping brands and retailers tell their stories to shoppers in a way that genuinely engages them. Um, and by so doing, literally a few feet away from the product. You're absolutely right. We do this on our fleet of displays, interactive advertising displays, that we call play spots. We have some 8,000 of them throughout China in over 150 Chinese cities in a whole range of, uh, of retailers. And shoppers will walk up to one of these kiosks. Uh, the, the display is incredibly attractive. I mean, this is using the language of games to get people to, to go into it. And as they go and touch the screen, they engage with whatever story the brand is keen to tell them, on average, for over a minute a time. Um, you've brought one of these in, so we can have a look at it. But um, it strikes me the last thing I would want to do if I go into a supermarket is play a game. I want to be in there for the shortest possible time. And you know, you brought this one in. It looks attractive, mm. as you said. It's got sort of interesting graphics. I'd probably go over and have a look. The last thing I want to do is stop playing with it. I just want to get in and get out. And so many of us are in exactly that situation. The thing is that while you just want to go in and get out, you're probably with somebody else, a family member or a friend, who actually isn't in the same frame of mind of getting that bottle of milk and leaving. They're actually looking for distraction. And those are the people who will go up to our play spot and engage with it. It works in Asia, obviously. Uh, what makes you think it's going to work here? Is it going to be culturally different? It is. Of course it's culturally different, and the, cult and the content itself is adapted to each of the markets we're in. Uh, however, the actual act of looking for a playful distraction is completely universal. We've piloted this with consumers in Australia. We get even better results on some of the metrics. And, you know, just take the tube here in London and observe how many people are playing Candy Crush. People play games the world over. So how would you turn a game? So I'm looking at the console now and it's, it's going through all sorts of different things. Um, you know, what on there would make me buy? It's one thing playing a game, maybe it passes a bit of time, uh, that's all lovely. But how do you convert that into sales? I think what most advertising is about is putting a message and a brand in the forefront of the consumer's mind. And we're using the science behind playful learning to actually facilitate and develop that. So what we're doing is very simple. We're taking any brand story and decomposing it into one core message. And we will turn that message into a game. You may be a toothpaste. You have a special molecule that goes and blocks micro cavities in your teeth. We'll turn that into a game. You can go whack away and block those cavities and you've now understood that this molecule will help and, you reduce pain. And does it work? Does it make me buy more toothpaste? It does. And this is, of <laughs> you course, have to say that. <laughs> and this is, of course, what the retailers go and tell us. I mean, our systems are connected. Everything is live. This is all, of course, a big data play. And what we go and see through the analytics is two things. We go and see how consumers' preferences change over time and how they change sustainably uh, after using one of these Subacra experiences. But we also go and see the uplift in sales, of course. And probably the state of my teeth as well. <laughs> mm. that, that'll be next, I can tell you. It's a, a bit creepy. Film. You know, you're going to know too much about me, aren't you? Well, we're going to know a lot about the types of people in an individual store. In fact, most of the time, we don't know or need to know your name or personal identifiers. 
Okay. Charles, Good really time. nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks well, it for was an absolute pleasure. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing it in. That's Charles Corbett there, the co-founder of Subaka. Yeah. Now, in a moment, we're going to take a look through the business pages. First, here's a quick reminder.